Welcome back Knitters, I'm Jana with Pearl Together. This week we're working on the crown chart of The Crofter's Kep by Wilma Malcolmson. The pattern's down below in the video description. I love this part, it's just fantastic. And if I'll warn you, if you start the crown chart in the evening, you will want to stay up and finish it. You will absolutely be compelled to finish the kep that very evening. So be sure you're not starting it at like 10 o'clock at night, unless you have more willpower than I do, which is likely. All right, I'm working on row three of the crown chart. One thing I want you to notice is that I've gone ahead and removed all the markers now because we're gonna be decreasing it and they're just really fiddly and they're not necessarily gonna land in the right spot. So after you have gotten established with row one and two and you know that things are lined up and, th and the colors are stacking and the patterns are stacking the way you want them to. For example, you know that you know, you have one here and then you have three of your contrasting color and then you have one right in the center of that little diamond. When you know things are placed in the correct order, then you really don't need the markers because you're paying attention to your pattern. So for example, right now I've come to the point where um, I've already done the central double decrease right here that I'm going to demonstrate for you. And then we know that subsequently there's just one diamond shape and then we're working on making this V. So you can notice that in the pattern and that helps kind of create your landmarks and you know that you're on track. So as I'm coming up to this central double decrease here right in the center, I know that I'm going to have that contrasting color and then I'm going to decrease two stitches here. So you're going to slip the first stitch. So I always slip stitches as if to purl unless the pattern indicates otherwise. So slip as if to purl and then you're going to knit these two together with the correct color yarn. Now I do do this with my right hand. I switch back to my right hand to manage this. Then the one that you slipped you're just going to grab that and pull it over the other two and then go ahead and knit your last, last one. So you can Again, you've created that landmark that's really easy to read your knitting and see where you are there and know that you've placed that in the correct spot. Okay, let me get through here to the next one. I'll show you that one more time. All right, again, I've come to the next place where I need to do that central double decrease. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit that first one, slip this one as if to purl, knit the next two together, and again, I switch back to my right hand for this part because when I, I like to have good control over the slack right here when I slip this over the top. The one that we, we slipped, we're gonna pass this over the top. And I like to have good control of this to keep some tension there. And then I go ahead and knit that last one and then I'll switch back to the pattern color being in my right hand. That's just my personal preference when I'm doing a double central double decrease. I want the tension to be right so everything lays nice and flat. So um, yeah, it's probably not a, you know, purist correct thing to do, but it works for me. All right. The other thing I want to mention real quick is when you look at the pattern, you'll notice the, you know, that it's kind of looks like a cutout orange, or you can think of it as like the world map, right? When something is round, it's the only way you can translate that to a flat piece of paper is to leave some spaces blank. So all these extra gray spaces here in the middle, that's just, just disregard that. Just keep knitting straight across because your hat's gonna end up being curved um, and there's no way to really show that except for leaving squares that are blank. So that's just no stitch, don't worry about it. So if you're cruising right along on row three and four, for example, you'll just go straight from this dark square, skip that because it's not a stitch and then you'll do your central double decrease and then go straight on to the darker square there. So that's just disregard it and keep going on to the center. Okay. So just think of it like, you know, the world map or an appealed orange. It has to, it has to be curved to lay flat. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. I finished the crown and I've, I just love it so much. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful star. So I got all excited about it at the end. And <laughs> when I came down to the last 12 stitches, as indicated in the pattern, all I did was I cut a tail about six or eight inches and I had both strands of the gold rust colored yarn and the darker color A. So at the end you have both A and B I believe it is. So what I did was I just 
you know, I, I have both strands in my darning needle and I just went through around twice, taking the stitches off the needle and I went around two times and then down into the middle. So now I have all these ends to weave in and I'm super happy about it and that will take me a while and I'll show you how I prefer to weave in the ends and block. I'll show you that in the next video. Um, so there you go. It's done. For now, well, not really done because I still have to weave in the ends, like I said, but I just think that's lovely. I think Wilma Malcolmson is a brilliant designer. That's amazing. Um, my husband's going to be super happy. So, yeah, we'll uh, block it, get rid of some of the cat hair. <laughs> All right, I hope you found that helpful. Next week, I'll show you how I'm going to block my cap and how I'm going to, how I prefer to weave in the ends. I will admit that I'm pretty. I tend to procrastinate the weaving in of the ends, so it does warrant a good Netflix and a good darning needle and, you know, just a couple of hours. Maybe not even that long if you're faster than I am, but there are quite a few. So, all right, until next time, I'll see you next week and thanks for watching.